Give up, do we? I'm gonna do this all day. So Battlefield 2042 has been out for about a week or so, and the general feedback hasn't been pretty. In this video, we'll be going over not just the good and the bad of the game, but also the context of the game's release, specifically with its direct competitor in terms of being a military first-person shooter, Call of Duty Warzone. Warzone has been out for over a year and has dominated the gaming scene during that time, and with good reason. Their formula of combining Call of Duty and a Battle Royale was a no-brainer, and the results, especially at the start, were amazing. Warzone has been one of the most viewed games on all viewing platforms, and has not really had a challenger in terms of a modern-day military FPS. But it's had more than its fair share of bugs and glitches, and in the past couple of months, Warzone has gotten stale and hackers have ruined the game. In one of my past videos, I cited several content creators who have either scaled back their Warzone content or stopped making it altogether. So the time was ripe for Call of Duty's main rival to step in and save a player base that had grown tired of Warzone's endless issues and a developer that seemed more interested in selling skins and bundles than actually fixing the game's main problems. When the first Battlefield 2042 trailer dropped in June, it was very well received. To date, it has almost 22 million views and a high like to dislike ratio of 1.1 million likes versus 32,000 dislikes. With a slew of YouTube videos being published by the official Battlefield channel in the weeks thereafter, announcing the new Portal game mode, a Tarkov-like hazard zone, and the announcement of an October 22 release, I went ahead and pre-purchased the game back then. With the pre-purchase, you were promised early access to the beta test. The stage was set, the hype was real, and the players were eagerly awaiting for an announcement of when the beta would be. For myself at the time, I was close to hitting my KD goal in Warzone, but I was also feeling a bit of the fatigue, especially with the unbalanced guns and again, the hackers and cheaters. But there was radio silence for a couple of months from DICE regarding the beta, and on September 16, the developer announced that the game would be delayed from October 22 to November 19. This was due, they said, to the challenges with the global situation. This, along with the late announcement of the beta, set off alarm bells within the gaming community. The beta finally arrived at the start of October, and it came with one game mode and one map. The reception wasn't that good, due to the numerous bugs and performance issues. The overall feedback from the player base was that, based off of the beta, the game could still use a couple more months worth of polishing before release. The developer, DICE, promised that this was a much earlier build of the game and that the actual release build was much further along than what the playable beta had to offer. Not everyone was convinced though. 2042 released on early access on November 11 and pretty much everyone's fears came true, unfortunately. The game was buggy, glitchy, had performance issues, and lacked depth in terms of progression and customization. 
There's been tons of videos and Reddit threads enumerating these, so I won't go into too much detail, but the common issues mentioned are problems connecting to servers, getting disconnected in-game, a lack of a scoreboard and in-game comms, weapon bloom resulting in poor gunplay, overpowered vehicles, especially the hovercraft, lack of destructible environments, poor performance optimization as even high-end rigs struggle with getting consistently high frame rates, lack of guns and customization, some attachments having no difference between each other, lack of depth in hazard zone, poor menu navigation, bad audio, and the list goes on. As of November 25, it is one of the worst reviewed games on Steam, sporting a mostly negative review count, with only 27% of the 43,000 reviews being tagged as positive. That being said, after 19 hours of game time, does the game have any positives that I can talk about? Full disclosure, I haven't really dived into Portal, so I can't speak much to that game mode, as I wanted to get as much time as I could in All Out War and Hazard Zone. First off, it looks fucking amazing at max settings. The terrain, the environments, coupled with dozens of players shooting it out, looks absolutely stunning. The little graphical details, such as getting mud on your guns, on your operator, or grass and leaves blowing with the wind, or whenever a vehicle passes by, are also a nice touch. There's moments in the game that come off as cinematic and make you feel like you're in an actual, well, battlefield. Once you start to unlock some of the other guns and attachments, the gunplay gets even better and much more satisfying. In All Out Warfare, I find that Breakthrough is a more exciting mode than Conquest, as it's a lot more hectic and team fights are more focused in specific areas. When the auto is performing well and in sync with the visuals, the adrenaline kicks in whenever you see dozens of your teammates pushing or defending the specific capture points. More than once while on the defending team, our squad got pushed back to the final spawn point and we had to hold it against overwhelming odds until the timer ran out and we actually managed to pull out the victory. The rush that I got in these moments is pretty similar to getting wins on Warzone if I'm being honest, and all that without even any in-game comms enabled. Meanwhile, the game mode Hazard Zone attempts to recreate the tension that other games in similar genres do, namely Escape from Tarkov and Hunt Showdown, wherein you spawn into a smaller map with other squads and AI bots, attempt to retrieve items from specific spots on the map, and successfully extract before the round is done. While it certainly has its moments, Hazard Zone definitely needs more depth and rewards for playing it. As of now, the only unique thing you get from completing it is more game cash to spend on items for your next Hazard Zone run. That's it. Imagine if they actually let you use that currency to unlock more character or weapon skins and customization a la Tarkov or if they had a global scoreboard to indicate how many wins or successful extractions you've done, similar to what Warzone does for its Battle Royale wins. If DICE could add more depth and content to Hazard Zone, it'd be so much more rewarding to play it. To their credit, DICE has been very open with addressing the issues cited by the community and have already rolled out a day one patch, with two more on the way within the next 30 days that are targeted at resolving the game's biggest bugs and glitches. It took them one day to disable a bug that players found with Dozer Shield. Imagine Raven Software doing that with Warzone. Hopefully these next two patches do what they promise so that DICE can then move on to adding more content to 2042. The game absolutely choked and left a bad impression on release. There's no denying that. But there's definitely a solid base here to build upon for a successful rebound. In my mind, if we've lived this long with Warzone and its issues, then 2042's issues shouldn't look as bad in that context. It just begs the question, why weren't these problems addressed during the game's development, and why didn't they just delay the game further instead of just a month? To the former, I can't really say as I'm not a developer, but to the latter, it most likely has to do with the upcoming Warzone Pacific update. During the period before 2042's release, there was a general feeling that Warzone was already on its last legs, and that Raven Software was finally pushed to actually wake the fuck up and address its two main issues after literally months of complaints, which was a new map and a new anti-cheat. EA probably wanted to swoop in and establish 2042 before that happened so that no one would be interested in Warzone 
by the time a new, the new map and anti-cheat dropped. Fortunately, that plan may have backfired because Battlefield is definitely not ready in 2021. Their only hope is to get the game in a much more playable state before Warzone's specific update drops in December, or else the majority of their players will move back from 2042 over to Warzone once more. At this point, Warzone still has a leg up on Battlefield as Warzone's main issue as of now, and it's definitely a big one though, is the hackers and a lack of content. Sure, they put out new temporary game modes here and there, but in general pretty much everyone is just waiting for their December update. DICE though still has a couple of patches to put out to address their issues for Battlefield, and there's no guarantee these patches resolve everything. To be honest though, both Activision and EA win, since they still end up getting millions in profit from churning out buggy games and selling in-game content, which, sad to say, is par for the course for developers nowadays. So who loses in this situation? The gamers, of course. Aside from speaking with our wallets and not buying unfinished or buggy games, there isn't much that we as consumers can do but provide feedback and hope that the devs actually fix the issues. Thankfully for us, fixing these issues is in the developers' best interests if they want their game to actually have an extended lifespan. So here's to hoping that in the next couple of months, both Battlefield and Warzone are actually much more playable, much more enjoyable, and have little to no issues. That being said, I have been enjoying Battlefield a fair amount, so I'm already at level 23. At the end of the day, competition between these developers is going to be good for us consumers, as they have to ensure that whatever content they put out is of better quality than that of their competitor. That's it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please do leave a like and subscribe if you did. Thanks, and stay safe everyone.